Hello there, and welcome. My name is Alexander, and you are listening to another realization. If you are a believer in government, if you believe that the concept of government authority is legitimate and stands firmly on solid ground, that a few people can have the right to forcibly rule the rest, then I have six simple questions for you. And I ask but one thing when you answer these questions for yourself, and that is that you simply be honest with yourself. Number one, are we all equal in terms of rights specifically? Do we all have the same rights as anybody else? Do we all have equal rights? So most people would logically avow that indeed we all have the same rights. Number two, is there any means by which any number of individuals can delegate or give away to someone else the moral right to do something which none of the individuals have the moral right to do themselves? So because we're all equal, all people don't have the right to steal, murder, trespass, assault, kidnap, and other relevant things that result in harm unto another. Nobody has that right. And since we cannot delegate or give away a right that none of us have, akin to giving someone else the ability to fly when you don't even have it yourself, let alone see anyone else have that ability before. Number three, do those who wield political power, presidents and legislators, for instance, have the moral right to do things which other people do not have the moral right to do? If so, from whom and how did they acquire such a right? So if your answer to the previous question was no, then you cannot logically assume that those in positions of authority over others have the moral right to do the things other people cannot do, such as stealing, trespassing, murdering, assaulting, kidnapping, etc. And if they do, how did they acquire such a right? Because as we've just established, we couldn't have given them that right, because we don't have that right ourselves, and you cannot delegate or give away a right you don't have. Number four, is there any process, like constitutions, elections, or legislation, by which human beings can transform an immoral act into a moral act without changing the act itself? So, can harmful behaviours, such as stealing, trespassing, murdering, assaulting and kidnapping, suddenly become moral if I were to write it down on a piece of paper? So, because I wrote it down on a piece of paper, I have the right to steal from you now, according to this scribble on this piece of paper. Yeah, indeed, that sounds obnoxious and insane. But wait, what if I were to get approval from my friends? that all agreed that I had the right to steal from you. That's their signature right there. Still sounds like some weird mythology, right? I agree. Now here's the constitution. Unambiguously and officially stating that I, as an authority, have the right to tax you, or forcibly confiscate wealth, or without mincing any words, to steal from you. Now, you would surely not doubt that it is now moral for me to steal from you, right? Because this piece of paper says so, and this one is holy and is to be fervently revered. Now comes my next question. When lawmakers and law enforcers use coercion and force in the name of law and government, do they bear the same responsibility for their actions that anyone else would, who did the same thing on his own? So if you were to commit acts of aggression upon other beings, you and you alone would be responsible for your actions. But if someone else would commit the same acts of aggression, such as stealing, trespassing, murdering, kidnapping, etc., would they bear the same responsibility if they did so in the name of law, i.e. this fancy scribble on this piece of paper? If you need any help when you contemplate that, I want to remind you of the precedent of the Third Reich. During the Nuremberg trials, the Nazi soldiers were thoroughly held responsible for their gruesome actions during the Second World War, despite the fact that they were, quote, just following orders on behalf of the law. The same way police in this era say that they, quote, just carry out the law and don't make the law. Which brings us to the sixth and last question. 
When there is a conflict between an individual's own moral conscience and the commands of a political authority, is the individual morally obligated to do what he personally views as wrong in order to obey the law? So when the group of people who hold the delusion that they have more rights than you do, who think that they can alter morality and make a wrong into a right because they deem it so, who think that they can get away with everything, demand that you set aside your right to exert your free will and conscience to subvert yourself to their authority over you and do what they tell you to do, even if it causes a tremendous amount of suffering on a personal and on an economic scale, do you still think that you are, quote, morally obligated to do so? Merely because it is the law? So picture yourself living in the era when millions of innocent people were dying as a result of the laws that were imposed by Stalin in Soviet Russia, and by Mao in Red China, and Hitler in Nazi Germany. Because during that time, people had the exact same mindset. I have to follow the law, even if I know that the action that I am demanded to perform is very wrong. I have to do what I'm told because otherwise very bad things would happen. It would be chaos and mayhem, if not for the law. Really? It would have been much worse if people did not comply with the inherently immoral diktats that were enforced by the Nazi regime or the communist regimes in Russia and China? That it would have been much worse than tens of millions of people dying as a result of people doing what they're told because it is the law? You have to be a truly dishonest person if you think that obeying the law merely because it is the law is a moral imperative, as it has nothing to do with true morality, but it has everything to do with subservience. And once again, just be honest and be fair to yourself when you answer these six simple questions, and I bet you that you won't be able to maintain a strong belief in the concept of government authority without contradicting yourself, which shows you that your belief in authority defies logic and reason, and reveals that you merely accept the notion of authority out of faith, which is meant to show you that you have a religion, and not a coherent philosophy, because the concept of authority is not upheld by reason or principle, but is upheld by violence and coercion and by those who perpetuate its existence by believing that it's legitimate, when in fact, authority bears no resemblance to reality. What you should be paying attention to is self-ownership and voluntary interaction. This is commonly described as voluntarism, although I don't like the ism part of it, because it isn't an ideology, nor does it resemble anything like an ideology, one that you identify with. No, it is actually a description of how life really works, and it is quite simple. You own you, and I own me. The only way for people to mutually cooperate is by way of mutual consent. We all have the same rights, and we don't have the right to forcibly control the decisions of another. And that is the only logical and moral way to live, and the only way that true equality can work in a non-contradictory fashion. And that excludes the existence of any government authority of any kind, because government is not voluntary, nor is it legitimate or rational. It is violence, in the very sense of the word. If you want to know more about self-ownership and non-aggression, keep tabs on my channel, and I shall link to some valuable resources in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.